My family moved here in 1839. They were in New York City briefly for about six years and were not comfortable in New York. Came out here and at that time found a German culture. German immigrants had settled here for about 100 years prior to the time my family got here. Today it's a much more diverse culture, but there is a, a wonderful work ethic. People are proud to work, they're productive. Um, we do hire mostly local people. Um, we get people because of our, the nature of our business and the fact that it is global. People come from all over the world and want to work here, and we tend to favor those people that are local and that will benefit the community by working here. We've been able, over 159 years, to build our reputation to the point where it would be impossible for anyone else to replace us as long as we continue to maintain our leadership position. I'm proud to show people through the factory there are no real secrets that are hidden in terms of what makes a Martin guitar. The secret is attention to detail, and it's, it's the synergy of all those different parts and pieces being put together by all those skilled craftspeople, almost as absolutely perfectly as a human being can make it every time. And even if competitors attempt to copy us, they can't have our reputation. We've got them beat. We've been in business longer than anybody else in the guitar business in the world. And as long as we continue to make great guitars, everybody else is going to have to try and catch up to us. We don't have to catch up to anyone. We just have to keep leading the pack. Endorsements are an interesting question. Um, they do come up periodically. For so many years, famous guitar players have bought Martin guitars in music stores that for us to start an endorsement program now, I'd be afraid we would insult all of the prior customers who are famous who bought Martin guitars. And our feeling is that the product speaks for itself and that musicians, regardless of whether they're famous or not, if they're dedicated to playing a fine guitar, their first consideration is a Martin. And we're able to sell Martin guitars to famous musicians. Other companies would have to give them a guitar because they wouldn't be inclined to buy it. They are inclined to buy Martins. It, it might. You know, it, it, it might benefit us to have powerful paid endorses. But we have such powerful unpaid endorsements. You know, Paul McCartney was pictured on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine holding his Martin guitar. You can't buy the cover of Rolling Stone. If you're an advertiser, you can't call them up and say, I want to place an ad on the cover. The cover is for editorial purposes. So we got the cover, and we didn't have to pay for it. Um, I know other companies use endorsements. I know it's popular in sports. Um, we use endorsements in a roundabout fashion. We love it when famous people are seen holding their Martin guitars. We're ecstatic. And it happens routinely without us having to go out and solicit it. My case, um, my parents were divorced when I was three. And so I was not heavily influenced by the business. Uh, my mother moved away from this area. And I was raised by a stepfather, and primarily by my mother. And she allowed me the freedom to consider different choices. And there was a period when I was a young teenager when I really didn't consider this business at all. I came out here to work one summer and realized what a fascinating thing it is, what a, what a special business it is. It's unique. And at that same time, I began to realize my place in the business someday was probably going to be to head the business up. So I worked out in the shop on the line, all told about two and a half, three years got the experience of, yes, I know how a Martin guitar is constructed. I've done it myself. I went to business school to learn to speak the language of business, knowing that you know, if I was going to run the business, I'd have to know how to talk like a businessman. I find it fascinating. Um, the nice thing about, not only from my perspective, but I think all of my colleagues, when we're endeavoring to make the best of something, we don't have to lie. We don't have to make stories up. We don't have to con people. All we do is tell the truth. And, Boy, that's, that's a pretty easy job. The factory was working on the work of the workers. The body of the body was a tennis fisher. The work of the work was a very difficult to do with the work. But when he was talking to him, he was laughing and laughing at the work of the guitar. He was telling me that he was a very difficult job. He was telling me that he was と彼は言う。自分の手で一つ一つブレイシングを削りボディのサイドを曲げギターを作る
そのギターをミュージシャンが長い間弾き続けるそんな喜びを感じられるのはこの仕事しかないマーティンを支えているのはデニスのような職人たちだそのギター作りについてマーティンの歴史家でもあり顧客担当でもあるマイク・ロングワースに話を聞いた。Well, most people are interested in specific guitars.、Uh, they either own one or、uh, have just inherited it or, or found it and want to buy it or something like that. And they want to know what model it is and how many were made and when it was made and、uh, things of that nature. And most of that information I can provide.、Uh, the one thing we don't do, and surprisingly, everybody asks the question, they say, you know, what's it worth? Well, You know, we're in the new guitar business. And I love our old guitars. I mean, that's basically,、uh, to a great extent, what my job's based on. But,、uh, but really,、uh, we don't sell old guitars as part of our primary business. So I can't usually、uh, appraise them for them. Well,、uh, I can't really deny that.、Uh, Uh, I'm not sure that, that, that I would use the word stubborn as, as much as uh, uh, conservative. Uh, uh, and I'm one of them. Uh, uh, I resist change. You know,、uh, uh, if, if my office is right here, you know, I don't want to move it somewhere else in the building. You know?、uh, and uh, I would just assume things stay just as they are. Uh, and then we have people that are more progressive who are coming up with new ideas. And, and, and、uh, so we have to balance each other out.、Uh, but there are things, I mean, there are,、uh, certainly are machines、uh, that you can put a chunk of wood in and push a button and it would make a neck. And here we sit with the draw knife paying somebody to whittle a neck out. So obviously there's a little stubbornness there, right? Uh, uh, if you want to use that word for it. Uh, uh, but I tell you, there, there's something a little mystical or magical about uh, this uh, day and time when everybody is mass producing and, and, and、uh, making everything by the millions.、Uh, to take a walk through our factory and see somebody you know, uh, uh, whittling out a neck or hand shaping the nut on a guitar or pounding the frets in by hand, you know.、Uh, Uh, doing all, all this work by hand, and、uh, I hope you never lose that. But I tell you,、uh, if, uh, if we could find, you know, we never refuse to use a machine. You know, a guy is kind of crazy to saw a piece of wood like this if he's got a bandsaw handy, you know.、Uh, really, uh, uh, you, you don't want to.、Uh, You, you know, hurt yourself, a bandsaw is faster, safer, and more accurate, so you use it. And we use routers, and we use drills, and we use saws.、Uh, but that guitar, you know, once the parts are, are put in a usable fashion, that guitar is built by hand. And I hope it stays that way. I, I have a saying、uh, that. We take a Martin sound and then we build a box around it. you know.、Uh, but in actuality, I, I think that you know,、uh, in modern times, a lot of people will、uh, they'll do a lot of scientific research.、Uh, but back when, you know, when the dreadnought was first being designed, when Martin guitars were made in the early days, I mean, there wasn't any such thing as sophisticated electronic equipment to test things. They did it by trial and error. They made it, and if it didn't work, they changed it. If it still didn't work, they threw it away and tried it again. And they developed these, these uh, designs, uh, like the X bracing system,、uh, came along uh, uh, somewhere uh, uh, in the vicinity of 1850, probably a little before that, apparently. But, But in that area of time,、uh, and that was about、uh, when Martin started developing his own designs, which eventually became、uh, world standards. So, 
the thing about a Martin Tone, I guess, is that is that we've been at in the business so long uh, that we have, you know, uh, by trial and error, have developed uh, uh, sizes, shapes, uh, brace shapes. Uh, we've uh, uh, tried various woods, you know, and have simply, through trial and error development, have come up with uh, an ideal uh, situation. And uh, uh, as I've said, you know, uh, uh, we're probably the most copied guitar in the world. But I truly believe that it was absolutely experimentation and trial and error that led us uh, to develop the ultimates in guitars. Uh, but we've had 160 years to do it in. Uh, I, if anything, I think uh, that we have improved uh, you know, people start talking about you don't make them as good as you used to. Well, let them bring me their old guitar and I'll show them where today's guitar is better. The, uh, the fit of the parts is better. In many cases, the material is better. The glues are better. Uh, 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 they're a little bit more symmetrical. You know, they, they don't vary as much as they used to. Uh, and, uh, uh, we're making some of the best guitars today that we've made in the history of the company. The only thing we haven't figured out how to, is, is to how to inject 25 years of age into it. You know, they have they have to age naturally. <laughs> あの、そのあの、で、だから僕録音する時はアンプも通しますけども、ここにもマイク立てて両方の音を拾ってますけどね。うん。大体さ、僕はね、あのギターはそんなに暗いのですよ。で、あの、マニアでもないしね、コレクターでもないから、ほんま
他のねやっぱり僕河合のギターも終わったことあるんだけどね河合のギター終わった時の音とねマーチンをマーチンのギターは上に上に座ったんですよ僕はギターのその018のね小さい可愛いボディやのにね座った時にその響きがねリバーブがついて割れますねパリーンとこうあのリバーブの音が何とも言えん音でね今でも持ってますよ Thank、you